Hi everyone, good afternoon. A very warm welcome to all of you. So while we settle down, I know it's just the very beginning, um, we do have a video prepared. So while we welcome our final guests and settle down, I'll request the team to play the video that will take us through the B2B Unlock journey. In a world transformed by technology, businesses have entered a new era of limitless possibilities through digital commerce. ONDC, by creating a world-first network approach, is transforming India's digital commerce landscape. Since its inception in 2021, ONDC has been on a mission to democratize e-commerce and bring its accessibility to the smallest of sellers. Having begun the transformation of B2C's digital commerce, expanding to eight domains and over 200 cities within the past year with thousands of daily transactions, ONDC is now set to revolutionize the B2B trade. B2B or business to business transactions can be classified into three categories raw material buying, institutional buying, and distribution business. ONDC's B2B journey begins by enabling the distribution businesses addressing the enormous need and potential of the digital penetration of B2B commerce in India, which is really low, a mere 1 to 1.5% due to challenges like limited credit options, high logistics costs, and thin profit margins. Furthermore, distributors and manufacturers struggle with many challenges. Manufacturers being located remotely and being unable to connect with a larger network of retailers Limited financial services options and a lack of credit and working capital hinder operations and restrict customer base growth. Retailers have to settle for limited choices as stocking up on all items from various manufacturers is difficult, even with access to wholesale options. Local distributors become the primary choice for retailers due to better logistics, credit facilities and doorstep delivery. So how does ONDC address these B2B commerce challenges? by providing scale access to buyers and sellers and add value chains and empowering sellers like retailers and restaurants to become buyers as well. Digitization of commercial operations leads to increased visibility to entire logistics value chain. Opportunity for data-driven insights and automation, driving efficiencies and making businesses ready for wider technical tools like AI, voice commerce and new business models. Businesses can expand services and improve experiences, thus better satisfying evolving customer demands. An exciting new wave on ONDC begins today. Come, be a part of ONDC on a B2B journey. Uh, thank you. So once again, a very warm welcome to everyone. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Meenakshi and I'm a part of the network expansion team here at ONDC and I will be taking you through the program today. Um, before we start, I'd just like to um, extend a warm welcome to um, the officials from DPIT who are present with us today. So we have um, Shri Sanjeev sir, um, Shri Bajoy sir. Um, we also have Koshi sir. Koshi is our um, CEO and MD. Um, and um, we also have Raman sir who's joining us online. Um, who's the CMD from SIDBI. So a very warm welcome to our dignitaries. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, I can speak on behalf of my team and confirm that we are very excited um, for today because on 21st May, we successfully executed our first um, B2B order. And um, you know this order took place between the network participants, Rapido and Signcatch, who are present, their teams are present here with us today. Um, the successful B2B order makes possible a whole new avenue for digital transformation and enablement um, that the team at ONDC, as well as all the network participants and ecosystem participants, are super excited to um, dig into. Um, in my time while onboarding NPs here, I've had n numbers of NPs ask me, okay, when are we going live with B2B? And I'm very proud to say, um, we are now live with B2B. Um, and our foray into B2B means that we are moving towards a more seamless, foolproof, and formalized B2B ecosystem. So super excited about that. Um, to push things off, I'd like to invite Koshi sir to give his welcome address. Um, Koshi sir, if you could please. Sanjeev Vijay. 
Thompson, Sumit, and all the friends from the media and the network participants. I'm extremely thankful and happy that you were decided to come and join us in the next big milestone for us. Some of you had been sort of actively with us, so you know what, where we are going, and some of you are sort of, sort of new. One thing just, I mean, I've been saying this all over again, I mean, to everybody, but again, rain, uh, you know, reinforcing it, is that what we are trying to do as an open network is a completely different model that has never been attempted anywhere. We, all of us, including me, from few years ago, had been so tuned to thinking only as platforms. And since we thought only as platform, our mental models with respect to everything that happens is in e-commerce is based on how a platform will work. Which means that there will be a platform who has some proprietary solution. They will onboard buyers and sellers onto that solution. And if they manage to get a significant participation from the users, either both buyers and sellers, then the life is made. Then the network effect will help them to reach, to become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And that has become a challenge not just in India, all over the world. And that's why various countries are attempting different mechanisms to address this issue of concentration and associated market practices. So now, we are trying to think about an open network. And the, and the funny thing is, open network is something that we all know in every damn business except in e-commerce. Even in commerce, I'm sure some of you, if you recall, there was a business called catalog marketing, which has been big business all over the world. Only thing here, it, instead of a, you know, a digital uh, you know, catalog on our computers or mobile, they used to send you as a paper. But everything else was unbundled. They had different sellers coming from different parts of the world, all integrated to work by connecting only in the physical, I mean, by, by communications. But the standard systems and processes established really helped them to have seamless consumer experiences. But when it came to e-commerce, we thought that everything has to be done by one entity. But now we are saying that, let's come back to the model of normal commerce, where we have independent entities who, are ex who develop expertise in some special components, building blocks of this transaction, and then make it available to a larger cross-section of people, and there'll be some people who will come and stitch them together and make a uniform user experience. So since it was, since we are working only on integrated platform approach, as you would know, while all of us sitting here are very active users of com digital commerce, but the penetration is really low. One is there are specialized ones, some for food, some for um, consumer goods, some for Mobility, all of them are separate, separate bundled. And buyer side, maybe five, six percent, seller side, few percent. Why that come to B2B, it is like completely disjointed one. So that's why um, we started this journey. And some of you had actually joined us last 29th of April when we started a alpha testing of B2C with few merchants doing some, some transaction among their friends and relatives, but real transactions with five network participants, four seller, one buyer, and then one logistics. Today we are showing that alpha testing, we have reached about 240 cities. We have some merchants doing the same kind of thing. But at least 20, 25 cities, there are every day a couple of hundred transactions happening. And from, no, that is when we started a beta testing, saying that let us open it up, which happened on 29th of September. So in there again, you know, each of this network participants who are coming live are trying to first do it, say that let me check it out, whether it works. Let me, don't make a big noise about it, let me just see whether it works. Let us fine tune. So two more domains where we started, it has sort of built up two, three domains. One is grocery food, which does something like, on an average, about 15,000 transactions, and then on daily, and then peaked at 20 to 25, we're working towards you know, Sanjeev always reminds me that Shabish should be make 100,000 transactions in the next few months, which is what collectively we are working. That is only on the, uh, on the side of the retail side. And then we also started mobility. Surprisingly, that sort of picked up in, though there are only two cities that picked up like really fast. And it does something like 
35 40000 rides a day in bangalore and bomb and and kochi which is also exciting and we are planning to have it in many places but that's not the story for today today the story is we are taking the next big step it's like last last april 29 for b2c today is b2b b2b has its own nuances because the buyers are different their priorities are different um there um, it is a pure contractual relationship between the buyer and seller you know everything is different and there will there'll be some negotiation and you know the, it's not like we buying a you know piece of cake or a you know packet of cake it's about a retailer thinking that i want to buy so many quantities of some goods which i can further sell okay and <clears throat> even the logistics there will have to be different but there again since it's not a central platform we cannot just say that ha huh, we are some such a something will we are set up a new master platform for b2b in ontc nothing like that same like in the b2c we need to have individual enterprises coming together and making making a network grow so we are happy that we have uh, rapidor and uh, sign catch and their mds are here thompson and sumit and their team in the last few months worked very closely with our technical team to develop the necessary processes and protocols etc and test it out and then feel you know because that's only we remember last year we did the same thing with few merchants we demonstrated real transaction with the first transaction being some a bunch of coriander or something uh, you know it was actually to prove that a network can work so similarly we wanted to announce formally and make to the to everybody and take your help to sort of publicize this big change only after demonstrating it is possible so we have uh, both of them are smart young startups they had small wall gardens of b2b you know uh, you know small wall gardens of b2b platforms and they believe that this is a transformation they need to be a part of it they believe that protecting you know get, getting some vc money and throwing it for building market share should not be the approach rather bel- believe in something like an open network so what they have done is they brought their buyer application and their seller application independently separately and demonstrated that one buys one enterprise buyer application has now a broader choice and guys and buy from the seller of the other and we, that is a, that is when the true inter- interoperability works so last week they did a golden transaction in the last one week they between them they did about some 160 or transactions you know between you know cross transactions which is a very very strong demonstration because they didn't want to just make a statement without actually being able to do that and that's what we did this and we believe that is just the beginning and another few of them are already in the pipeline like spice money and uh, uh, etc are on the pipeline and lot more are expected and i understand some of the buy some of the n- n- network participants are already live are also started talking seriously and i believe that it will happen soon and this is where there's a lot more possibilities because well in b2c there are some established players big ones you know having very large amount of transaction and b2b there are not so much some regional some small are there but but i understand that government also look at it very very seriously you know one of the biggest challenge in the digital commerce or you know even if you help enterprises to digitize how do you help them to reach across the market you have to each of them have to have separate buying applications so portal they used to call so now it we are trying to create a standard which will make all these things a big possibility so that's why um, dpi it and the sec- i mean the, and the minister is very strongly supporting this big change and similar kind of cooperation is coming from every ministry if i just give you some of the early stages happening for example ministry and small and medium enterprise probably you would have seen their official announcement by the minister himself of wanting to create schemes to help small and medium enterprise to digitize and make their catalogs visible on the network and help them and also give them even hand holding support because it's not just technology it's not like some people can create a technology it's also we need to teach some processes even how to create a proper invoice even how to create a barcode for the the logistics player to come and pick it up from somewhere far away and take it in somewhere for in a distant location these are all small small elements it's a, it's a journey and some mature people may happen uh early and but we have a large number who will need a lot of hand holding so i gave you the example of msme similarly i was talking to the agriculture ministry probably you would have seen sfac you know small farmers small farmers association they are already onboarded about some couple of hundred uh, fpos and they are expecting a lot more to come 
in each of these areas even B2B become relevant. Okay, so there is a concerted, um, um, similarly, uh, Ministry of Textiles, when you would have seen e handloom going live. And uh, there again, the um, minister has already uh, advised that they, it should become ONDC protocol compliant so that there is a common, if I look at the India become a common market where all the buyers have equal opportunity to discover all the sellers and all the sellers have equal opportunity to discover the relevant buyers. So that's a way that we are uh, seeing this transformation. And uh, today we are just, I mean, we want to just make an official announcement that we have successfully proved it and we have lots of plans. So we'll also ask uh, our uh, colleagues from the ministry to talk the big picture. We'll also have uh, the, the, you know, the early adopters telling what is their vision and plan, you know, uh, so that you, uh, you know, it will become a message to the larger, uh, uh, to the country as a whole and uh, sort of give encouragement and confidence to many more people to participate. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Koshi, uh, and thanks for always motivating us and keeping us on our toes. Um, we have uh, representatives from DPIT here with us today um, who have been critical in supporting our expansion um, as well as our state engagement um, with all the states in the country. Um, I would like to invite Sri Sanjeev sir to grace us with his presence and a few words of encouragement, sir, please. Thank you, Meenakshi. While I was, uh, friends, while I was coming for uh, this uh, media briefing, I was giving a very well scripted speech to deliver, but I decided to go against it and speak from my heart. When I joined DPIT, I think six, seven months back, I was being briefed about what I have to look after. Among many divisions and uh, sectors, a word ONDC was mentioned by my support team, which didn't register to me. So I didn't comment anything on that. And uh, suddenly, that officer asked me, sir, do you know what is ONDC? I said, what it is? So he said, it is future. So I said, OK, it will be future. But what does it mean? So he literally said, this is open network for digital commerce. And I just wrote it down and kept it. I, at that time, also didn't realize the importance of ONDC. I think after a few days, Koshi sir, I call him Koshi sir, called me in the evening and he said, whether you would like to meet me? I said, yes sir, please come. When he came, I realized I had met him 15 years back when he was looking after income tax uh, TDS. 10. Ten, yeah. Then I, I knew him, then I thought that Look, ONDC is in hand of a good person whom I know personally, and he will deliver something. This is how it started happening. Then he said ki he will try to explain me, and in his trademark style, he kept on speaking and speaking and speaking. After half an hour, I could understand only two sentences. One is interoperability, and second is unbundling of services. That suddenly made me think, oh, this is the, the wow moment uh, came to me. And I thought that, look here, it is a great concept in itself. And at that time, I had a feeling, as most of us have, that it is we are creating some kind of platform to compete with the best in the world, and we Indians will defeat it. But he was very patient with me, and he made me understand that this is not a platform, this is a network. And then it became a motto for us that we always use that we are having a network. And then I started interacting with uh, almost, I think, half of the team I keep on interacting 
off and on. And as Minachi said also that I keep criticizing, but believe me, this criticizing is for sharing a common dream. The more I got to know about ONDC, it became my own baby, my own dream. I come from a village in Bihar where, unfortunately, electricity came few years back, and there is no mean by which a producer, I have some lychee and mango orchards, and I am sorry to say I cannot serve you here because there is no means to get the farm produce delivered to what to say metros, not to the district towns. And it suddenly came to my mind that ONDC is one network which, if it is used efficiently, it will be catering to those sectors which have been untouched till now. And that is our prime concern. And believe me, that market is so huge, so big, that you can't even imagine. World is not limited to tier one, metro cities tier two, tier three. Think of Indian villages. Few months back, I had gone to my village and I was surprised to see that where there is no electricity, now in most of the houses there are refrigerators, air conditioners, and people want that there should be e-commerce. Unfortunately, still e-commerce, despite having big players, not more than 2 to 3 percent of commerce is still e-commerce. It, it is still brick and mortar. And the biggest advantage of ONDC is that it gives wings to even brick and mortar stores, your nearby stores. Each one of your nearby stores can join ONDC. And I think I should not promote ONDC because everyone here is on the same page. But before I end my speech, I will like to tell that when I was in UAE and I was discussing with uh, the minister of uh, dealing with e-commerce, it was very difficult for me to explain that Indian government is doing this pro bono and there is no profit motive involved. I will say that for all network participants, profit is involved and profit should be there and then only the network will survive. But please keep it in mind that the profit should be such that the margin should be such that small stores can also onboard and the profit should be through volume, not by the value terms. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Sanjeev, sir. Um, we have a small change in the agenda now. We will ask uh, CMD Sidbi to um, go next. So we have Raman, sir, who's joined us virtually. And I'll request him to um, give his special address next, um, because he does have to leave slightly early. Uh, Raman, sir, if you could, please. Yeah, hi, thank you. Good evening to all of you. Uh, it's certainly, uh, as, as uh, Koshi has just now explained, uh, an interesting milestone that ONDC has reached. What we have been seeing over the last one year is the kind of traction that a network would like to see where multiple buyers and sellers are coming in. I think the biggest problem that we faced was the inability of multiple sellers to really get themselves onboarded onto the network. And therefore, we have all worked very hard from behind the scenes to be able to handhold thousands of small sellers across the country who would largely fall within what might be known as artisans or small businesses or people who have specialized skills making artifacts, textiles. So that is really the you know uh, heart of India, which produces multiple 
you know, artifacts and handicrafts, which all of us would love to buy. But we are all aware also as we buy it that the kind of margins that are taken by various intermediate layers will end up leaving the manufacturer with a very small return on their investment. So one of the planks of ONDC was to be able to help these small artisans and handicraft makers to be able to come on to the ONDC network and thereby benefit from the fact that ONDC does not have the kind of commissions that are payable to the other e-commerce platforms that exist in the country. So this has been one of the many public goods that ONDC has tried to bring through. And I'm saying this very clearly in the backdrop of what we are witnessing today, which is the launch of the B to B segment. So we have struggled with small artisans direct to customers, to consumers. And today we're talking about B to B. And it really, I'm happy that uh, Koshi uh, invited me here to, you know, uh, share my thoughts because this is the area which SIDB has been working for the last three decades. There are a host of other uh, institutions in the government and in the private sector which have done a lot of support to the MSME sector. The MSME sector is really about small businesses. Let me split that sector into a very distinguishable 1.5 crore, which are within the GST framework and maybe another 7 crore, which are outside of the GST framework. So we need to be able to very clearly chart a course and make a path forward of how ONDC is going to help which particular segment. So the way I look at it is this is a red letter day because multiple small businesses which are GST registered will probably get a chance to be able to become visible to a much wider audience the moment they log on to ONDC. And here is really the important catch and the difference Till yesterday, we were struggling to bring the sellers on board. But because we are now dealing with a segment which is that much more educated, that much more computer savvy, that much more in the business of selling, the difficulties in bringing the vast number of small businesses within the GST registration system, there must be over 1 crore or 1.2 crore small businesses within that itself. And therefore, we've, we, we look forward to a very, you know, um, intense next three to six months where SIDBI will be able to uh, go across the country in conjunction with the help of all the industry associations that exist. There must be over five to six hundred industry associations, big and small, that are scattered across the country. All of them have got membership of the MSMEs. And therefore, it is really our dream to bring on board more than 30 to 40 lakh small businesses, which are today supplying to larger businesses, to bring them on board and get them to have a chance of expanding their markets. Till yesterday, we were all spending a lot of money trying to help the small businesses expand their market and reach new buyers. And today, I honestly feel that given the experience of one year that ONDC has got actively working with a particular type of sellers on the B2C, I think we are in a very good position to be able to accelerate our progress in the B2B segment. There are already multiple players, both in the government and in the private sector, who are helping the SME sectors for B2B business. And I clearly invite 
all of them to join the ONTC network because it's another way for today's facilitator to expand their reach. So even if there are small uh, platforms which connect buyer to buyer within the MSME space, they could actually log into ONDC and expand their own networks and become partners of ONDC in this great network that is being created. So what we really look forward to through this launch of B2B is a huge and very quick expansion of the number of smaller businesses that will be able to come on board to the network and to be able to get a chance to compete and sell their products to larger businesses. And therein lies the power of the market because even the larger businesses would love to find some competition within their sector and therefore improve the ability to buy. Of course, we should be cautious, we should be aware of how the network already plays out because if any of you are cognizant of how businesses run in this country, it's the large buyers that have got dedicated supply chains and those dedicated supply chains are virtually 100% sellers to the large business. And therefore, there is this sort of unequal relationship that exists between the large buyers and the several small sellers. And that is something which has helped both sides and therefore it is continuing and sustaining. And therefore, we should be aware of what we are entering and how we need to be able to not disturb the current relations, but expand the requirement or expand the ability of both sides, sellers and buyers, to be able to expand their markets. There are, interestingly, uh, SIDBs working alongside uh, certain very powerful uh, networks which have already come into place, which even connect businesses across countries. And I think that is another very powerful segment that ONDC should be able to bring in. So we would be very happy to work alongside existing players who have the technology ability and the capability to quickly bring on board their, uh, you know, connectivity with ONDC and therefore expand the market. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Koshi and Sanjeev. Uh, it's been really good to join you here on this uh, milestone event of ONDC. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Raman, sir. Uh, SIDBI has been absolutely central to our uh, last mile digital transformation efforts here at ONDC. Um, I will now move on to the next segment of today's agenda, and I'd like to invite um, first Thompson from Rapidor and then Sumit from SignCatch to give us a brief on their um, products. And that will be quickly followed by um, a demonstration of how a B2B uh, transaction occurs on ONDC. Over to you, Thompson. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, even I'd love to go extempore and uh, speak, and but then I think you know the time will just fly and we'll not ever speak enough. But we are so thankful to be here today at this milestone event. It is truly an honor and privilege to stand before you today in this remarkable place, the headquarters of ONDC, the cradle where new realms of trade are being defined. Not just domestic trade, but going forward, digital protocols for world trade as well. Today we mark a milestone in the journey that will continue to shape the future of business propelling not only us but also all the MSMEs to democratize and give opportunities for all. I'm truly thankful on behalf of various network participants in the B2C and the B2B side on behalf of placeorder.com for the support and guidance we have found in our destiny helpers. The ONDC team, strongly backed by our government, under the leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji. And we are ever thankful 
to our Honorable Minister of Commerce and Industry, Sri Piyush Goyalji, for the access we continue to have to interact with him and the team at DPIIT. In close interactions with the ONDC team, we discuss design and implement practical platforms for B2B. There have been multiple discussions, no, this doesn't work like this, does not move like that, we need to enable credit, we need to work like that. But all of this settles down for the common greater good of what is practical and possible to take it forward. Even as we stand here today, it is not a glamorous role that we play. On one side, we need to convince the SMEs, the MSMEs, the business owners. We need to address fears, we need to address what are the possibilities and make sure that they do not miss the opportunity. And we have the believers, and few of them are here today. So our destiny helpers, the WNDC team, are the ones who see the invisible, the things that are not as if they are, so that many, like us, platform creators, can do the impossible, or what was seen as impossible before, an open opportunity to trade. Uh, while we have been live on the B2B network for a while now, we have coordinated and collaborated with SignCatch, uh, PlaceOrder.com, and OrderDay, BeachApp. We have executed the first interoperable trade, titled The Golden Handshake. And we are ever thankful for this friendship that will go ahead to discover more opportunities for us together, for the world, starting with India. Now, there are opportunities on the network for as many platforms as there are as sands on the sea beach, and for as many MSMEs and enterprises as there are as stars in the sky. So it is not just about us at SignCatch or at placeorder.com, Rapidor, but it's for all out there who can believe and see and enable your area of influence, the focus that you have, where you're able to serve the B2B trade, B2C, and move forward and enable this trade and transaction to happen. Just to share a few numbers of what we've been able to do in the recent past, as of Saturday, 3rd June, we have seen on um, our respective uh, platforms, placeorder.com and the platforms of SignCatch, a total of over 147 orders, or more than 160 as we speak. Uh, orders split between different companies and uh, a good amount of them we've been able to do between the buyer and the seller app on placeorder.com. Uh, Lakshmivog, a brand established in 1986 of Jaipur, who've been working in their own ways, we've been able to convince them, and they've been able to see the benefits and uh, come on board. They are the producers of the finest quality of Atta, Basin, Suji, Delia, and Maida, serving in Jaipur and now on the network, having received more than 92 orders. 37 of, all, of those orders were from Abad Fisheries, one of the largest processors of quality, quick frozen seafood in India, headquartered in Cochin, Kerala, and I'm thankful the CEO has joined us today on this landmark event. Over 18 orders were to Red Zone, a garments manufacturer in Tamil Nadu, now discoverable on ONDC across India. So there are opportunities on the network for as many platforms as there are, and the call to rise is there for each of these MSMEs. The MSMEs have two callings to answer, I would say. The first call is the call to rise, and the second call is the call to go forth. The call to rise is the choice to go digital from zero to one. And the call to go forth is the discoverable choice that they will have on the network, our ONDC network. And I would like to share one such journey of the business and many more, but time does not permit us here right now. The trade has become the lifeblood of our interconnected world, not just in India, across. It fuels economies, sparks innovation, and creates countless opportunities for growth. Historically, limited access and exclusivity have hindered the ability of such small businesses, but not anymore. Today, we take a momentous step towards changing that paradigm with ONDC, with platforms, and many more to come. And as we celebrate this momentous occasion, 
let us remember that the road ahead will not be without challenges. And we have a chance to push boundaries now, to innovate, to collaborate and work together, hand in hand to create a future where trade knows no limits and where prosperity is shared for all. Thank you and may this groundbreaking endeavor bring us even closer to a more prosperous and inclusive world. On behalf of the team at placeorder.com Rapidor, we are very thankful for this opportunity and the best we can do is to continue to serve more, better and move forward together. Thank you. Sumit, could we have you now? Thank you. So we have Sumit from SignCatch who will take us through his um, journey next. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a privilege and an honor. A lot of sweat and blood gone in. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's one of those moments where, you know, as, as a kid, when I, when I used to read a lot of Vivekananda, you know, I used to think, you know, there will be this momentous time where we'll go like sisters and brothers of the network. You know, so it almost feels like that. So I'm, I'm one of those guys who likes to say things from his heart. Uh, so, you know, I think uh, how I look at ONDC, it's the open network for digital collaboration. That's what we discuss internally. Uh, why I say that, you know, is, is, is we forged wonderful collaborations uh, with the network, but also with companies, wonderful companies like Rapido. Uh, seemingly, we're both in the same space. Uh, but what I think uh, uh, Mr. Koshi and his team have been able to do is create a system where seemingly players who are in the same space can you know, benefit from each other. Like sellers which are being onboarded onto our platform get buyers from Rapido's platform. Uh, sellers which are being onboarded by Rapido can get a demand from our platforms. So it's a very interesting way the ecosystem is evolving. It's also a discovery for us as a technology company before we got introduced to ONDC. Uh, we were working with some very large aggregators. In fact, I'm privileged to have the ex-CEO of Walmart, Sanjay Keswan, who's now also coming on to ONDC with his own brand, Xiong. Uh, you know, that was our exposure to the B2B uh, 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 space. And from there to come on to an open network, uh, which was talking about empowering local wholesalers, uh, local distributors, local brands. I think it, it, it was something which was almost like, you know, we found a place, you know, we found a calling. So it was almost like a meeting of, uh, you know, uh, 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 synergies which were meant for each other. Uh, since then, you know, we've broken up the platform into two parts. We've got the buyer side and we've got the seller side. Uh, the buyer side is called order day, uh, place an order. You know, when we were working on the Kirana development project, one thing we realized, dhanda desi mein hi hota hai. You know, so the names which we created, order day, bhaiya order day, it's almost like purchase order day. And the other one, the seller platform, it's called Bech, tu sir Bech. So now we've kept it very basic, very fundamental. Uh, and, and the first golden transaction has been conducted between Beach as a seller platform and place order, which is Rapido's. Again, you know, we were kind of surprised. And you know, we just thought like order day, place order. So we were almost like synchronized to the level where our brands are also seemingly sounding very similar. Uh, so it's, it's, it's been wonderful to conduct the golden transaction. In fact, uh, we have the gentleman, um, Ankit ji, uh, from uh, organic diet who's here he he is a, a, an entrepreneur in himself uh, in fact one of the orders which his brand got was from ondc so the goodies you will see today uh, were placed on order day uh, from mr uh, uh, jain's brand organic diet uh, in terms of uh, you know where this would head i think uh, we are just the evangelists i think the 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 world's an oyster. You know, there's so many things which can be done. B2B, uh, quoting Mr. Koshi, I think just 1%, I think is what's been digitized, really, right? So 99% of the market opportunity exists. Exports is another very interesting area for MSMEs. We were, in fact, uh, discussing uh, uh, the other day, you know, how we should start building up our protocols where these brands and MSMEs can be exposed to the global markets, right? So because I feel, personally, at least the philosophy which goes in our company, technology is an enabler. And in the end, it should enable to a point where all work is done by tech and human beings should be left to their curiosity. So I think with that thought process, uh, you know, I would, I would like to leave the audience uh, uh, with a, you know, a quick preview of a, a demo of the golden transaction uh, which was done. And uh, 
I am as excited as all of you to make this a success. So is it the demo video? Is it? Hey, we welcome you on ONDC to witness India's first B2B trade on the network with SignCatch and Rabadol. So let's dive in. On the screen, we will demonstrate a B2B buyer placing a bulk order from order day, a B2B buying platform on the open network by SignCatch. On order day, a buyer can explore a variety of products across multiple product categories given in the application, or even discover local B2B sellers on the network and directly purchase from them. As you can see, the catalog of Radha Saumi Food Products Private Limited, a B2B seller listed on ONDC from another platform, is visible to Sehek General Store, a B2B buyer on order day. Now, to place a bulk order, the buyer can simply select the products that he wishes to purchase and set quantity as per his requirements. Being an essential feature for bulk orders, slab-based pricing is available on the B2B network. Now, once the buyer has added products to the cart, he can confirm and place the bulk order. To understand how this bulk order will be processed on the seller side, let's go to placeorder.com, a B2B seller platform by Rapidor. The bulk orders received from the open network will be visible on the dashboard. Now that the order from Sehek General Store is visible on the platform, the seller can accept and start prepping the order. The seller can also update the status of the bulk order as per the protocols of ONDC. The updated status will also be visible to the B2B buyer on the other platform. Once the seller has fulfilled the order, he can mark the order status as delivered and add remarks if he wishes. So, this was the trade executed between Order Day, the B2B buyer application by SignCatch, and PlaceOrder.com, the B2B buyer and seller application by Rapidor. But since the ONDC protocol enables interoperability across platforms, a B2B buyer listed on Rapidor's PlaceOrder.com will also be able to purchase in bulk from B2B seller listed on Baychap, the B2B seller platform by SignCatch. So, let us see how that happens. As you can see, the catalog of organic diet, a B2B seller onboarded onto the network by SignCatch through its seller platform, is visible to Venus Grocery Stores, a buyer on placeorder.com, which is B2B buyer platform on the network by Rapidor. To place a bulk order, the buyer can simply select the products he wishes to purchase and set the quantity for each product as per his requirement. Now, once the buyer has added products to the cart, he can simply confirm and place the bulk order. To understand how this bulk order will be processed on the seller side, let's go to Baychap, the B2B seller platform by SignCatch on the ONDC B2B network. On Baychap, the bulk orders received from the network will be visible under the dedicated feature called ONDC orders. Now that the new order by buyer Venus Grocery Store is also reflecting here, the seller can review and choose to accept the order. Once the seller has accepted the bulk order, he can update the status of the order which will also be visible to the buyer. The option to upload invoice is also given to seller on Beige application so that the seller can share the order invoice with the buyer. Before sending the bulk order out for delivery, the B2B seller on Beige application can also add and share the delivery details with the B2B buyer for a smooth delivery experience. Now, once the order has been delivered to the buyer, the seller on Beige application can mark the order as delivered. If the seller wishes, he can even add a few images as a proof of delivery. Once confirmed, the order will be marked as delivered. So, haven't we made it easy to execute the B2B trade on the ONDC network? So, what are you waiting for? Come, join us on the ONDC B2B network. I hope all of you enjoy that as much as SignCatch and Rapido did. I also want to do a special acknowledgement to the gentleman from Hamdard. Uh, it's one of India's oldest brands and we've been able to convince them to come onto the network. 
uh, Mr. Nitin is there and we are anticipating Hamid anytime soon. He's the chairman of Amdard. He might be also joining us. So yeah, I think more power to the network. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sumit. Um, my next guest needs no introduction. Can we please have uh, Vibhor here? He's the Chief Operating Officer at ONDC. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks for making it today. Uh, so I think uh, a lot has been already said, so I'm not sure what more I can add, but yeah, I'll just add a few cents in terms of uh, why we're really talking about B2B. I think that's important to understand, right? So if I look at, I think there were a lot of statistics that were thrown out there. Uh, and I think let's just do a recap in terms of where do we stand today, right? Uh, if I look at the larger MSME segment, right, uh, where you have almost 100 million odd MSMEs in the country, less than 1 million of those today sort of uh, are transacting digitally, right? That's where the numbers come from, that you have 100 million on one side, and you just have 1 million of them which are sort of transacting digitally. So that, I think, talks about the opportunity that exists in, in, the, in the B2B space. If I look at from a different perspective in terms of the digital penetration, right, uh, which means that how many people are actually buying these products digitally from, from MSMEs, it's, again, less than 1%, right? So again, I think those are some sort of opportunities which exist. The key question that gets asked to us is, uh, what are those barriers which are sort of uh, making these numbers look so less or small, right? So I think there are a few things that we need to talk about, and let's understand how ONDC as a network can unlock some of these barriers. One is, in a lot of these segments, the margins are very, very thin, right? And therefore, how do you enable these thin margins to still operate seamlessly on a network sustainably becomes critical to understand, right? The, the second and most important point is, is how do you build trust for any B2B transaction to happen? Especially when you have you know, quality assurance issues, when you have uh, uh, new sellers who are not really sort of certified, how do you build that level of trust uh, when you're buying digitally? And that's one of the most significant reasons why B2B hasn't taken off uh, on the digital trails, rails is purely because of the quality issues, right? The third is in terms of uh, lack of standardization, right? Now, every, every merchant or every MSME may have different specifications for customized products that they might be coming up with, right? How do you bring in more standardization from a buyer perspective, from a purchaser perspective, which gives me more comfort in terms of what I'm buying and what I'm going to get is what I've ordered, right? I think those are some of the critical pieces. The most, the last piece that I want to talk about, while there are many other reasons, is the entire thing in terms of the access to credit, right? The point is today, most MSMEs are using informal credit options to sustain their businesses or fund their supply chains, right? Or their, or their entire value chain. Now, in that sort of a scenario, how can we replicate that on a digital rail becomes very, very critical to understand. So if I look at the top four or five segments, and I think that's the approach that ONDC is taking, to look at top four to five segments which contribute to the economy from a B2B standpoint, right? Whether it is agri, which contributes almost 19%, to, to construction, 17%, uh, manufacturing, 16%. So the key question in front of us was, can we look at some of these use cases, some of these sectors, and sort of try to s unlock the barriers that exist and see how we can sort of you know get them on the digital rails. So I think from a from a summary perspective, what what a network like ONDC can enable are four broad things, right? One is transparency, right? And when I talk about transparency, it, it's about the discoverability and the pricing discoverability that can happen on an open network, which makes it a very strong value proposition for anyone to transact for B2B items on the network, right? Uh, today, let's let's analyze and just reflect back in terms of how does price discovery happen in the B2B space, right? I think that's more of one-on-one -on -one connects that people have. Uh, even if you have price discovery happening through some platforms, but you're not really transacting on those platforms, it's only a discovery tool, not really a transaction tool, right? So how do you enable that part of the value chain? The second is the efficiency that comes into the entire network, right? Now, the moment you have enough discovery happening on the network, you have choices to play around with, that brings in a lot of efficiency 
and the fact that you have unbundled the entire value chain, right? And let's take a very different example. I think uh, one of my favorite examples. Today, if I look at some of the big pain points in the trucking industry today, right? One of the biggest pain points is the cost of logistics, right? And I think the entire Gati Shakti program of, of the government is focusing on how do we bring down the cost of logistics in the country. Now, take a simple use case where 40% of return truck ship uh, loads on, in the country come empty, right? That's one of the biggest problem areas in the trucking business, that 40% of your return truck loads are empty today. To top it up, you have issues with uh, the way this industry is segmented, right, or fragmented. You have most you know, truck owners who have typically four to five trucks. It's very, very fragmented. The largest company in India which owns the maximum number of trucks is in the range of 4,000 trucks only, right? Which means you have a lot of small operators who have significant working capital issues, and therefore, they take credit to serve that working capital issues, which gets added to the trucking cost. The third big element is safety of the goods that are being shipped, right? Which adds the entire insurance cost. Now, fast forward this to implementing this on, on a network like ONDC. Can the entire 40% empty truckload issue be reduced with demand generation on an open network like ONDC? Yes, it can be. Let's look at the other part of it. The moment I have a transaction digital trail for each trucker, right? Can I get better access to credit on the network, which can help reduce my you know, uh, costing burdens uh, that I today put on the transaction cost because I'm getting credit from informal structures? So if you look at some of these use cases, I think, well, yes, a lot of the narrative around ONDC has been around grocery or online food delivery. The moment you think much wider in terms of B2B, logistics, trucking, and different use cases, you start seeing the value that can be unleashed with, with such a use case, right? I think Sanjeev ji spoke about uh, the entire, you know, getting lychee or mango from Bihar to Delhi, right? Now, can the entire logistics cost be lowered because of an open network like ONDC? Can the warehousing be more streamlined because of an open network like ONDC? I think somewhere that's what we need to start thinking about, that how the power of an op op open network in terms of the two terms that he used interoperability and unbundling lead to some sort of you know, good measures. The third piece which I'm talking to talk about is the traceability that can happen in the B2B space. So we spoke about transparency, we spoke about efficiency, third is traceability, right? Now, even though we have unbundled the transaction, the protocol or the underlying technology enables a seamless traceability of the transaction, not just from a, from a data perspective, but from a physical movement of good perspective as well. So if that traceability can happen, it builds a lot of trust and confidence in an unbundled environment, right? And the fourth one, and the last one, is obviously the access to credit. I think that's going to be a big, big problem solver for the industry and the economy, because what you're able to do now is you're able to unbundle the supply chains from the credit lines. Today, if I look at, I think one thing that we spoke about was we have enabled the distributor part of it first, right? One of the traditional powers that a distributor commands, right, is the bundling of the entire supply chain with the credit lines. The moment you unbundle it and open it, there can be more participation that can happen in commerce. Right? I think that's, that's where I would sort of leave it behind. But yeah, a, a great start. Uh, thanks to both of you for taking this uh, you know, a lead role. And I'm sure there are a lot more of you to follow. Thank you so much.